Hello, James. Hi. Please uh, briefly introduce yourself and the work you've been doing so far in the context of this uh, sure. conference. Okay. Um, my name is James Wallbank. Um, I uh, lead an organization called uh, Access Space Network. We provide Access Space, which is a an open access digital lab that anyone can come to and can get involved with technological learning, with building networks and with building their own confidence and creativity. Um, possibly the relevance for this conference is that most of the people who uh, participate at Access Space are un or underemployed. And what we're providing is a context which allows people to invest their time wealth in something that becomes useful in terms of skills and capabilities. How are the talents and skills uh, recognized and developed? But that's a super interesting question because in the end we don't provide people with qualifications. We're not so interested in helping people to get a badge. Instead what we're doing is we're saying can you gain capability and crucially can you gain confidence now the way that we do that is to encourage people to pursue their own projects so they are the people that are taking agency they're the people who are driving the process and then how do they learn well what we encourage is people is what we call peer learning so this is people learning from each other so rather than having teachers we encourage everyone to learn from each other. At another conference, you said a brilliant thing, which is money is so last century. How, <laughs> how, do, how do you see us? Now I'm regretting that, as you know, we have to pay the rent. But uh, yes, no. yes. Be besides <laughs> paying the rent, how do we see? How do you see our uh, our human race uh, transcending? The, this um, money paradigm? I think that's economies. a really interesting point because the thing is we have become so obsessed with the idea of money that we're perhaps neglecting many of the values of work and jobs. You know, the uh, jobs are fantastic because they allow you to gain skills, they allow you to make networks, um, they allow you to gain possibility in your life, to expand your horizons. Um, getting paid is nice, but it's probably the least important feature of a job as long as you have enough resources to actually get by. Um, and of course, we can see that there are such things now as jobs which pay people money but impoverish them more so that people are transferring their time wealth into time poverty in exchange for only a very small amount of money which perhaps reduces their possibilities and their life chances and their options. So I think that we have to give people the confidence to develop themselves as a person and of course in the end that will add more value to everyone. Who are your allies in the work that you do in Sheffield? Um, we, Where do you get the most support from? Well, uh, currently, in fact, we're, we're getting some fantastic support from the European Regional Development Fund. Um, obviously, you will see that um, access space has positive impacts in terms of um, digital inclusion, participation, health and well-being, uh, social inclusion, um, but also the sort of higher end of capability of our participants. It allows for enterprise incubation, uh, for creation of new jobs. And we've had some very exciting news about that recently, where we've actually helped one of our participants to create a, a, a significant size enterprise that already in four months has had more economic turnover than the whole of our organization in the last year. Incredible. Um, what do you see as the biggest shift that uh, needs to happen or, or that is happening in the way that uh, we organize ourselves? And that That's, uh, I think you've exactly got to the point here, which is that we are living in an increasingly complex period. And information technology in particular manifests as a way of making things more complex. Every link that is made 
technologically, whether it be through you getting an email address or following someone on Twitter or creating a new feed that feeds data or whatever it might be. Each one of these things is making connections where connections haven't been present before. And so now society is orders of magnitude more complex than it was even five years ago. Now, in this situation where you can't even see the level of complexity that is developing, how can you plan? How can you organize? I suggest that in response to increasing complexity, the correct answer is not to plan more, but to plan less, and instead to start becoming disorganized. But of course, disorganization does not mean that you can't achieve coherent objectives. It's just you have to have different ways of coordinating activity to reach positive goals. And, you know, a word for this, a technical word for this, might be stigmagy, which is about embedding practices that allow um, cooperative activity to take place. All right. Um, if you have anything else to add, uh, I, I, this I can, is welcome. I can add things forever, <laughs> and I'm afraid you will run out of videotape and patience before I have finished. But I would really urge um, policymakers to start thinking about the value of informality, about and perhaps thinking less about siloed results. A key feature of access space is that it has a hugely wide range of positive impacts in terms of, you know, psychological, informational, in terms of employment, in terms of health and well-being, in terms of urban regeneration. I could go on. But I, I was going to say another important one is actually about social cohesion. Now, the thing is that each time we actually, it's a very, very cheap model that we run on. So we don't pay for computers. They're entirely recycled. The software that we use is entirely free. But we do have some very small core costs that are very difficult for us to get out of. Now, a difficulty that we have is that each policy silo only sees and values a small part of our work. And what we need is we need support that understands that holistic interventions can be extremely efficient and effective. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, James. It's and, a pleasure. Uh, many years to access space. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>